Let's assume that we have a positive aggregate demand shock, which means aggregate demand will shift to the right. Therefore, we can call it demand-driven expansion. An example of this one is higher consumer confidence. So let's draw our aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. Our y-axis is our real output. Our x-axis is real output. Our y-axis is inflation. Our long-run aggregate supply curve is vertical line. Our short-run aggregate supply curve is upward slope. And our aggregate demand is downward slope. All of them intersect at the same point. That's why we have an equilibrium, which is point A. This will give us our full employment output, our potential output at natural rate of unemployment. And this will give us inflation level one. So if we have a positive aggregate demand shock, I know that aggregate demand will shift to the right. Therefore, we have a new point of intersection between aggregate demand 2 and short-run aggregate supply curve. Here we'll have a higher output level, Y2. This means that we we'll produce above our potential. Consequently, our unemployment rate will be lower than natural rate of unemployment, which will cause an inflation recap. And at this equilibrium point, it would result in higher inflation rate. So let's assume that there is no government intervention, which means central bank and the government will do nothing. And we will leave everything to the market to correct itself by itself. And this will happen in the long run. Therefore, we know that because of higher consumer confidence, aggregate demand shift to the right because consumption will be higher. Therefore, it would result in higher inflation, higher prices. Higher prices means higher output and lower unemployment. If our unemployment is below Nairo, natural rate of unemployment, this means that our wages will be higher. If wages will increase, it means that cost of production will be higher. Therefore, producers will be reluctant to produce more. Therefore, short-run aggregate supply curve will shift to the left. So I will look at the point of intersection between aggregate demand 2 and long-run aggregate supply. It will be point C here. So short-run aggregate supply will shift to the left to intersect with point C. So at this point, we reach our full employment output, our potential output at natural rate of unemployment, and we have a higher inflation level. Make sure that this happens in the long run. Therefore, this short-run aggregate supply curve will shift many times, and that's why we, it could be represented by a few dashes over the years until we reach our equilibrium in the long run. Let's assume that the same situation here with a positive aggregate demand shock, but the government decided to use a contractionary fiscal policy. So what will happen by using contractionary fiscal policy? We are going to decrease government spending or increase T. Therefore, what will happen to aggregate demand? We know that aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus NX. If G will go down, aggregate demand will go down. If taxes will increase, I know that consumption will be lower. Therefore, aggregate demand will be lower. If we increase taxes on businesses, therefore, investment will be lower. So aggregate demand will be lower. So I know that aggregate demand will shift to the left. If aggregate demand will shift to the left, we will return back to our original equilibrium point, which is point A to our original potential output at natural rate of unemployment and our inflation level one. What if the RPA decided to use the monetary policy? So we're gonna use a contractionary monetary policy to return back to our original equilibrium by decreasing money supply and increasing interest. If interest will increase, investment will decrease because we have a negative relationship between interest and investment, which we call it crowding out. Therefore, our aggregate demand formula is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX. If investment will go down, aggregate demand will go down. So I know that aggregate demand will shift to the left. So we will return back to our original equilibrium point, which is point A, where we have potential output at natural rate of unemployment and inflation level one. Please remember that both monetary policy and fiscal policy affects aggregate demand. So if we use an expansionary monetary policy and expansionary fiscal policy, aggregate demand will shift to the right. If we use contractionary monetary policy and contractionary fiscal policy, aggregate demand will shift to the left.